recording of the Patterson Dental WebEx made April 8, 2020, learning about the extraoral suction system and N95 mask decontamination unit with Chris Marlott from ADS and CPAC. ADS uh, stands for uh, Ajax Dental Systems. Uh, the company, the main headquarters for the company is in China. Uh, we sell in 70 countries worldwide. We have a U.S. Uh, uh, corporate headquarters, which is located down in Ontario, California. We've been selling here in the U.S. market for five years, primarily chairs, units, and lights. Um, we do stock, parts, and inventory down in Ontario, California. And the latest product that we have um, is the ADS. Uh, the EO system is what we're going to be calling it. Extra oral suction is the name of it, or it's basically an extra oral evacuation system. Uh, the product is uh, kind of timely, uh, to say the least, uh, with everything that's going on with COVID-19. Um, I think we're going to see a turn in the industry, meaning that I think we're going to go back to a time where infection control <clears throat> is probably going to be one of the main concerns um, of the dental practitioner moving forward. So we were able to bring this product out, um, as I said, and what this unit will do is it, it basically will sit in front of uh, the patient. Um, it is on wheels, it has four wheels, it can move from room to room. Uh, there is going to be a need for more than one unit uh, in a dental practice. Uh, if the average practice has six operatories, we, uh, we're recommending as a manufacturer so that you don't uh, run into a constriction with, uh, with patients being booked uh, to have three units in the practice so that you can continue doing your hygiene and your dental appointments without having to wait for the availability of the unit. So uh, we can see that what we're going to do here is we remove the high volume high volume of droplets and aerosol produced during dental treatment. So it, it is a suction unit that you will place approximately six inches from the oral cavity uh, when you are doing any dental procedure from a hygiene uh, profi all the way through any uh, major dental surgery that may be uh, the doctor and or oral surgeon may be, uh, may be uh, doing on the patient. So the way it works, it is unique to the industry. It is the only one in the industry that I'm aware of. Um, I had somebody send me a picture, an image yesterday of a practice here in the Bay Area, and I'll send it over to you, Rick, uh, of a contractor that has developed a big fan that uh, sits uh, on the PMU box, and then he has a plastic bag attached to it, and then they cut a hole in the outside wall of the practice to suck the air of the operatory out. So there's a big need for this product. However, we're the only company at this point that is addressing uh, that need. So what happens is, is we turn the unit on. Uh, it has 10 levels of suction. Levels one through three are going to be for your hygiene type procedures. Levels three for 10 are going to be your traditional dental procedures. Obviously, uh, the more uh, that we are, uh, the more intense the dental uh, treatment is, Obviously, the higher we are going to want to turn uh, that suction on for. So you can see here how it's about six inches from the oral cavity, and we're able to very easily contain the overspray and or droplets or spatter that is coming out of the oral cavity. <clears throat> the unit um, also has a it has a HEPA filter built into it. So the way that the premise of the unit is set up is it, it's kind of like an N95 mask. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with N95 masks. Uh, basically, what it's going to do is as it uh, pulls the uh, aerosol and droplets and spatter down the arm of the unit, it's going to take those uh, particulates and it's going to pass them through a HEPA filter. It's a HEPA uh, grade 14 filter. And once the part, uh, particulates are on that HEPA filter, we are then going to hit it with a UV light so that we're killing all bacteria and all viral contaminants that are contained within that spatter or aerosol. So uh, the same way that an N95 mask, when you breathe, if you have a viral or bacteria that uh, is within your body, 
it has to attach to something else in order to move. So the, the, the viral content or the bacteria will attach to the droplets or the aerosol and will move out of the oral cavity down the arm of the unit and then into the HEPA filter, and then we kill it with the UV light. The unit is a 110 unit. Um, it does, uh, uh, very easy to operate. The maintenance on it is very, very simple. Uh, we need to autoclave the mouthpiece on the unit. Um, obviously, between patients, we need to do that. And then the HEPA filter does need to be re uh, replaced uh, about once a year. Um, I get asked a lot so far. Uh, the, the biggest question that I've gotten is, well, how do we know when to replace the HEPA filter? There's built-in technology into the unit that will let the uh, user or the operator of the unit know that it is time to replace the HEPA filter. I'm being told that the HEPA replacement filter is going to be somewhere around $300 annually. Uh, so um, it's a very easy unit to operate. Um, the UV light has a one-year warranty on it, and the entire unit itself has a two-year warranty on it. Uh, you're going to get about 8,000 hours of use out of the UV light. Uh, so basically, uh, we're probably looking at a time span on, the, uh, on how long it's going to last, probably three to four years before that's going to need to be replaced. I apologize. I don't have a, a replacement cost on that. Um, at this point, but we will uh, we'll get that information out um, as we move forward. Uh, this is a brand new product to us. I, I, I don't claim to be a, 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 an expert in the industry. I have been reading up um, on this uh, uh, type of technology over the past week or so and um, have learned a lot. I've gotten a lot of questions from the Patterson reps um, already, which has helped me to learn even more um, with uh, about the product. Uh, we've done a couple of uh, well, we did a WebEx yesterday. Uh, Rick and myself, we did a uh, a WebEx with a, a pediatric practice here in uh, the Sacramento area, actually, and they have some locations down here in the Bay Area, and uh, it went over very, very well. Rick, do you have anything you want to add in on how that conversation went and what the reception was like? So the guy we were on with yesterday is also their um, their chief compliance officer. And him and I were talking about how to rig something like this up in their new dental practices almost a month ago when this whole first thing started. He said, hey, I think this is going to turn into something. I want to create some kind of negative pressure around where we're um, doing dentistry. So when you guys rolled this out, it would sort of fit right in with something we were going to try to throw together uh, ourselves, actually. So it was great timing. I know they're pretty excited about it. Yeah, it's, I think we're going to see... Um, the impact that this is going to have and the other two products that I'm going to talk about this morning, I think you're going to see the impact that this is going to have um, is going to be um, favorably accepted by the dental practices out there. Um, the three products are giving doctors a way to address something that we've never had to address before in the history of dental. I mean, maybe the closest thing that we had, um, I was fortunate enough to be the SICAN rep when the statum uh, hit uh, big back in the uh, mid 90s or to mid to late 90s. And um, they changed the way sterilization was thought of in the dental industry. Prior to the statum existing, we only had one autoclave in the, uh, in the practice and we never thought about maybe we need to autoclave hand pieces. We didn't think about um, you know, the impact that it could have on the patient. Um, after the one patient down in Florida, uh, Kimberly Acer, uh, claimed to have contracted HIV, as soon as that moment became reality, all of a sudden we had um, a entire new industry created, or, or, or a, I shouldn't say an industry, a new product need uh, to fill within the dental industry. I think we're going to see the same thing, same thing um, with this particular product. It's going to be something that every practice uh, in the country is going to have to seriously consider about purchasing. I think that you're going to see your customers looking to purchase this unit um, probably one or two units initially until they can figure out a workflow around it. I eventually see one of these in every, op uh, every operatory um, in a dental practice, or I should say 
in every dental operatory that the doctors are going to be uh, practicing in, obviously. So I see it being um, a big, big change uh, in how we do things. Another reason uh, that I think the doctors are going to uh, look at a technology like this is it's going to have a very unspoken word to the patient when the patient comes into the operatory. So what I mean by that is I think that every patient, what, what's going to be on their mind when they start going back to the dental offices, hopefully and, and soon in the month of May or month of June, whatever it may be, um, it's going to be in the back of their mind. Um, COVID-19, and it's going to be uh, on the back of their mind, um, you know, what is this practice doing? You know, am I endangering myself by sitting here um, and um, having this procedure done? By having something like this put in the office technology-wise, it, 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 it almost brings up uh, the point that you don't even need to talk about it because the patient is going to understand what the unit's doing. The patient is going to have a, an understanding that Dr. Jones, my dentist, is investing in technology that is uh, the taking care of my well-being to make sure that I'm safe while, when I come to the dentist. At the same time, the uh, employees of the staff of the doctors are going to have peace of mind knowing that if the patient that's in the chair may have um, a uh, may be compromised in some way uh, that the this uh, unit is helping to protect them as well. So on top of wearing gloves, wearing gowns, wearing a mask, uh, wearing a face shield, all of those uh, things that I think are going to become um, a standard in every office. I think you're going to see more and more offices doing face shields. There aren't as many um, that were doing it prior to um, this COVID. Uh, situation. I think all these factors um, come to that, that that are coming together are going to lead to the conclusion that doc, doctor needs to do something about uh, about hel helping to contain overspray and bacteria and viral contaminants for staff members and for uh, uh, cross contamination in between patients. So I think we've got we've got a pretty good solution. Um, are there any questions so far? Am I, am I speaking too quickly or has anybody got anything they want to put in there or have heard other things other than what I'm saying currently? Yeah, feel free to unmute anybody and ask a question if you've got one. And I think that's a good point, Chris, about the teams. I've talked to a few doctors through this thing that already, you know, they have patients come in that have emergency treatment. And if some of the team doesn't want to come in, they're saying, hey, I, you know, I don't want to come in right now. So I think this will be a good peace of mind thing for them as well. Absolutely, I agree. And I've talked to, I don't know, I probably want to say, uh, I've probably talked to at least 100 doctors since this came out. We only announced this product last, I saw the first of it uh, last uh, Wednesday afternoon. Um, I got an email from my national sales manager at ADS showing it to me and basically trying to get my opinion on what I thought, if I thought it would be a product that we could sell. And uh, I looked at it and gave gave Jeff a call and said, "Hey, I, you know what? I think it's I think it's something we can work with. I think it's something that um, is filling a need. And then while it's filling a need, I don't think it's taking advantage of a situation. I think it's addressing um, a point in the dental practice that all doctors are concerned about. So um, we had a discussion, maybe 20, 25 minutes or so. Um, hung the phone up, and uh, I got a call back about." Uh, shoot, I don't even know, maybe not even 10 minutes later, uh, from Jeff, and he's like, you're not going to believe this. He said, but we, I just got a lead for you. There's a doctor in Northern Cal um, that uh, wants information on it. I'm like, how the heck did the doctor get the information already? I, mean, I, just saw the, I just saw your PDF that you sent me, whatever, half an hour ago. And apparently somebody over in... Uh, uh, Europe, one of our international reps, posted something on Facebook. And when it got posted on Facebook, the doctor saw it here in Northern Cal and immediately tracked down where to purchase it from, called the corporate office in Ontario, California, and then the lead was passed on to me. So I think we're going to see um, we're going to see a lot of inquiries, especially when we're back to work 
you may not be getting a lot of um, having a lot of contact right now with your dental practices, obviously because they're not they're not practicing dentistry uh, full time, just doing emergency type procedures. Um, but the most doctors that I'm talking to right now have been the clinic based uh, doctors, the ones that are concerned um, at, a, at a larger scale because they're still trying to operate and they're still trying to uh, do uh, emergency type procedures um, at, at a larger scale than your traditional dental practice. So I think when everyone comes back that first week of May, we're going to start seeing um, doctors taking a serious look about infection control in the practice. All right. Um, just real quick before we finish up this piece, um, you said this has been sold in other parts of the world for a little while. Yeah, so it has been available um, in uh, China, in Korea, and in Europe, um, and it is selling, um, uh, to, to coin a phrase, like hotcakes. Um, we're having difficulty keeping up uh, with production. Uh, the units for the U.S. market are 110 units. Um, which we are currently manufacturing 220 units in uh, at the manufacturing facility right now. So we have hired, we are running three shifts, 24 hours a day, to try and keep up or meet with the demand of this product worldwide. This is unprecedented. Never has any uh, dental manufacturer uh, been faced with um, a need for a product so quickly as that we are currently uh, looking at. So we're looking at, uh, I'm hopeful that we can start uh, having units here in the U.S. within 45 days, um, 60 days on the outset, on the, out on the outside, I'm hoping, um, because we, there's no air travel between China and the United States. So we can't build them and throw them on a on a freight on a, on a plane and send them over here. Uh, we gotta build them and we gotta send them uh, on a on a freighter. We gotta put them on a boat and ship it over. That's at least two weeks coming across the Pacific Ocean. Um, so we're looking at about a 45 day uh, window. Um, I would let your customers know that that's what we're looking at uh, for delivery time. We are getting inundated with orders. We had some, I shouldn't say myself, Jeff Neroy, national sales manager, has had uh, discussions with Kristen Scott and with um, Nick Abruzzo um, about uh, an opening order. I am told that Patterson Dental was going to be placing an order for 1,000 units um, within the next couple of days. <clears throat> My understanding is that the part number has been entered into the system. Rick, have you been able to look that up and see if Patterson has yeah, been entered into that? I can, I can email that out to everybody um, after. And just so everybody knows who's watching this recording, this was made on April 8th. So we're 45 to 60 days from, from now. Um, we do have a part number. I'll get that to the whole team afterward. And then if you could tell us what the retail is on that right now, um, Chris, that'd be great. Um, the retail on the unit. Is two thousand nine hundred and ninety-five dollars. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, Chris, I have a question um, on positioning of this. Number one, mm -hmm. um, if there's an overhead light, does that get mm -hmm. in the way of the actual, you know, where the doctor's going to work or the assistant's trying to reach in and assist the doctor? Mm -hmm. um, or is there a light at the end of this? So um, there is no light um, that is on the unit that, that I'm aware of. Uh, I haven't seen the unit yet because we're in such short demand. Um, it's an excellent question about positioning. Um, obviously, like any new technology or any new product that is um, brought into a dental practice, there's going to be a learning curve. I'm not going to be able to tell a doctor that he's got to keep it directly at 12 o'clock in front of the patient's uh, mouth while doing the procedure. It's something you can see on the screen there that the unit has got a pretty good uh, reach um, that we can uh, and be able to move that unit so that it's not in the way. Um, we may have to have assistants that are going to shift from the typical 2 o'clock position and maybe go up to about a 1 o'clock position so that unit can get in there and, um, and be able to um, uh, do what it needs to do as far as um, extra oral suction. Uh, we're, it's, it's just going to be, it's going to be a learning curve, I believe, and we're going to be able to have to deal with it um, on a case-by-case -case, um, uh, situation. 
And also, if I can add to that, Sean, um, I've got a video that Chris sent me yesterday. Uh, videos don't WebEx too well, so I'm going to put it up for everybody to see also. Um, and it shows the thing in use in a few different ways, and you can kind of see the length of the arm from different positions, and that kind of helped me picture it a little better myself. So um, I will go ahead and get that out to everybody also. Thank you. Okay, Chris, I think that might cover the, oh, I'm sorry, how about the um, the sound level, the decibels, how loud is it? Yeah, it's a great question. So yesterday when we were on the phone uh, with the uh, with your Patterson customer, um, it came up about uh, the noise. I'll tell you that the decibel reading is at 58 decibels, which is the same reading as we get when we are operating an electric handpiece. So once my first at 58 decibels uh, to Angel on the phone yesterday, he was kind of like, oh, that sounds kind of high. And then I said, when I mentioned that it's the same as an electric handpiece, he was like, oh, okay, we can deal with that. So I think that when I was able to paint that picture in his head of the sound level of what an electric handpiece operates, he was okay with the decibel level. Yeah, and that's at uh, setting number 10, correct? The highest setting? That, that is absolutely correct, setting number 10. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, mask uh, decontaminator now. Now. Perfect. Okay. So the second product that I have um, that we're going to talk about today um, is a uh, a sterilizer um, that can decontaminate N95 masks. Um, the company name is CPAC. Uh, CPAC bought. Um, Cox dry heat sterilizers about four years ago. And this is their first, uh, well, not this particular product. Their RH Pro 11 um, was their first entree of, the, uh, of introducing their technology uh, to the dental market. So what this particular unit can do is, is actually um, pretty cool. Um, it is the only FDA approved sterilizer in dentistry that I'm aware of um, that can decontaminate uh, uh, N95 masks. When we were talking with uh, Angel again yesterday, he, I keep referencing back to one, but it, the conversation went really well. Um, you know, we started talking about N95, N95 masks and how we're seeing, once again, a change in the dental industry. And we, we kind of talked about class three, class one masks versus N95 masks. And we all kind of agreed on the call that the N95 mask more than likely is gonna become the standard in the dental practice moving forward. That we're not gonna see as many class three, uh, excuse me, uh, level three or level uh, one masks that are being used by dental practices because staff members are gonna want uh, protection moving forward. So while we were talking about that, um, uh, Angel had said, you know, it's really, it's, it's like the wild, wild west right now trying to get N95 masks that literally he'll call one day a supplier and a supplier will say, hey, I got, I got, I got a pallet I can get you. And um, they're only nine, nine bucks a mask. And he said an hour later, he can call the same supplier and they say, yeah, we don't have any. Um, I can probably get you a case and that's going to run you 15 bucks a box, or excuse me, a mask. So uh, there's a lot of uncertainty um, going around about N95 masks and the availability and whether and how much they're being charged for it. So I kind of asked him, I said, well, what, do you, what did you spend on masks? And he said, well, we, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, but I, I believe he said he spent something like $11,000 on N95 masks. Uh, yeah, the organization, he was able to get some, and that's what they spent on is a buy a few weeks ago. Correct. So, um, as I'm talking to him, I'm saying, well, how much of an impact would it have to your practice if you were able to take that N95 mask and decontaminate it so that it can be reused again? And he said that's what they've been looking for. They've been looking for a way to reuse the mask. This unit will process... 48 N95 masks every 30 minutes. So we can do 96 masks in one hour. <clears throat> it's a new sterilization cycle. So the original unit used to do wrapped and unwrapped. 
Um, it's actually, it is called um, high velocity heated air is the, uh, the method of achieving sterilization. Um, so what we do is in the mask mode, the N95 mode, uh, the unit will go up to 155 degrees and it will circulate or uh, uh, change the air within the chamber 200 times um, within that 30 minute window. So we are able to effectively penetrate the mass. We achieve a log six kill with the sterilizer. So it's not, oh, excuse me, with the unit. Um, so it's not achieving sterilization, it's achieving decontamination, which is different. So decontamination is log six kill, which we kill bacteria and viral uh, uh, components. It doesn't kill spore. It works on, uh, on the same process of any decontamination product on the market. FDA has approved this as a method of decontaminating masks and reusing um, for more than one use. Um, I am told, I don't work for 3M, I know some 3M reps. Um, I am told by some 3M reps that uh, the N95 mask has, an, has a sterilizing or decontaminating life of 20 uses. So, you know, when you can go into uh, to a, a clinic environment or even a single practitioner and say, hey, if you're spending $10,000 on N95 masks, wouldn't it be uh, beneficial to have a product that can extend the use of that inventory of masks by 20 times? Run the numbers uh, in front of the doctor. We're going to have a um, return on investment uh, that we're going to send out uh, PDF. We're going to send out uh, to the dealers um, so that we can actually do that with the doctors and show it to them. Sometimes, you know, you talk about dollars and it doesn't uh, register. Um, I think by having this return on investment, what we're going to see how much the practice is going to be saving for purchasing this particular unit. Um, we have all of our FDA approvals. We've done all of our studies. We've submitted them to the FDA, and the FDA has uh, gone ahead and approved the uh, released us to be able to sell this to the dental market and to the medical market. Um, we are selling to hospitals. We're selling to uh, nursing homes. We're selling to urgent care clinics. We're selling to dental clinics, pri private uh, uh, practices in the dental industry. I see this, and, and, and I'll refer back to the statum analogy that I used earlier, I see this as another product that has just created a whole new niche within the industry. We now have a sterilizer. We, we never thought we had have to worry about sterilizing masks. We never thought of it. You know, who would have thought that this uh, that uh, COVID-19 was going to happen? Everyone thought it was uh, a sci-fi movie. You know, it's never going to really happen. It was pretty cool to watch. Uh, but it's in, in actuality, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's something that we need to take seriously um, uh, in, uh, in, and we need to be addressing it. So I think we're going to see a dry heat or HV, uh, high velocity heated air unit in every dental practice so that we can process the masks. Now we're going to take it one step further. We did studies and we released the studies at the Chicago Midwinter Meeting this past February. And we did uh, studies with every major handpiece manufacturer on the US market. And the results of the studies were actually um, better than we had ever anticipated. Um, when this unit is, excuse me, this unit is already FDA approved for handpiece sterilization. Um, the unit itself um, will uh, achieve in the normal unwrapped mode, it will achieve sterilization for a dental handpiece in six minutes. It will achieve it in the wrap mode in 12 minutes. So by having a unit, meaning a sterilizer, that can sterilize critical care instruments, meaning dental handpieces, sharps, anything of that nature, which traditionally an autoclave has a detrimental effect, we can extend the life, the, the sterilization life of those in pieces and critical care instruments better than anybody else in the industry. 
every hand piece that we tested came back with practically zero detrimental effects from the effects of the of our sterilizer. So we got. Chris, can I, can I um, just wind back real quick to part some about the masks? Yeah, sure. Sure. So um, one of the yeah. things I talked to somebody the other day who uh, their work uh, that worked in a hospital and they said they're wearing these N95 masks right now. And the hospitals are having somebody wear the same mask for five days so they can't get enough of them. So they're even having them put like uh, level one through three ear loop masks over their N95 mask to try to create another barrier since they're having to hold on to these things for so long um, because there's just not enough of them out there. So I think that's one of the things that really shows how valuable something like this could be because Correct me if I'm wrong on this one, Chris, but I think the big thing is a mask becomes sort of a soluble barrier once it's wet. So you're when you breathe through it all day, it becomes wet enough and then it can start absorbing bacteria and all these other things. Is that right? That is absolutely correct. So that's what they're trying to do with those ear loop masks is get that part, you know, take one piece out of the equation. But if we can go and decontaminate these things, so now we're, we're back to square one, I think that's a pretty, pretty big advantage there. And the other side of it is this is something, if we're using it just for masks, that can be put anywhere in the practice. It doesn't necessarily need to be in sterilization. We're not using instruments or anything. It does not need a dedicated circuit like a normal autoclave. So we can put it on the clean side, in a break room, or wherever. Correct. It's, um, it's going to have a need. Uh, it's going to fulfill a need in every practice uh, in the country. Um, and like Rick said, it doesn't necessarily have to have a home in the sterilization center. It can go anywhere. Um, another interesting thing that came up during the WebEx yesterday um, was that I think we're going to start seeing in larger clinics, and, and I've already seen it on a small scale, I think you're going to start seeing clinics that, um, that are hiring a, a uh, sterilization coordinator that it's going to become so important to the practice that they're no longer going to uh, have hygienists or assistants um, that are responsible for getting everything put to the autoclave and then processing them and then sterilizing them and then taking them out and then bringing them back to the operatory. I think you're gonna see in the larger clinics that you're gonna have one person that's going to be in control of that so that they have a central point um, that they can go back to if there's a breakdown within how sterilization is being achieved in the practice. So it's another impact. I think we're gonna see a change um, in the dental industry. Rick, are you, are you, have you dealt with any practices that are, have already implemented um, sterilization coordinators? Yeah, I have some people that um, they call them sterilization technicians. Um, and like you said, in bigger clinics and some of those places are the really busy offices. You basically have to have somebody in there all the time, which is, you know, like you said, even going to be more important now to have somebody who really knows what they're doing and takes control of the quality of that. Um, so uh, real quick, not to try to speed us up too much. Um, we only have a few minutes left because yeah. some other people have to hop on to another call after this. Sure so <laughs> any other key points you want to hit or do we have any questions? I I've hit my key points uh, for now. If it's, I'll take any questions anybody has. Um, yeah, so I have a question. How many times can you sterilize in a 95 mask or decontaminate? Yeah, so it's going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. It's, uh, um, it's important that we, um, we find out from those manufacturers, but I'm told, like I said, on the 3M N95 mask, uh, we're looking at 20 cycles. Uh, I heard that the Kimberly mask is something like 18. So depending on which one you're selling, I just reach out to that rep or that company and just verify that so that you're able to let your customers know um, how much money you're going to be able to save them because they're going to be able to reuse their mask. The other thing that it's going to be able to do um, is um, it's going to allow people to keep, the, keep their own masks. Um, if you've got a central sterilizer um, at a situation and you're, everyone's throwing their masks and you don't know who's is who's, um, people are going to be a little hesitant. Um, to take somebody else's mask um, that wasn't theirs initially. So this, with this type of unit um, in dental practice, you can put your own mask in and get your own mask back, which I think is going to be important. Um, I do have the studies. I showed them quickly there on the other screen. Um, I have sent the studies over to Rick. 
Um, so the studies will show exactly what we proved to the FDA in order to get the authorization, as well as all of the case studies that we referred back to. Uh, Stanford University did a study that um, high velocity heated air is the most effective method of sterilizing an N95 mask. And there's a couple of other studies on there as well. I believe uh, Columbia University and uh, University of Pennsylvania, I believe. But there's links yes, to sir. those on the, on those reports. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. Uh, just a few minutes left. Any other questions? No? Okay, well, thanks so much for taking the time, Chris. Um, people can reach out to their reps on these, product, on these products, and then we can get uh, extra information in front of them and get you in front of them as well. So thanks very much.